Why are GPU prices so expensive where you live? Where in America, prices are coming down on RTX 3090 Ti's, they're coming down on AMD's, RX 6700 XT's, RX 6600's, yet in my country, they are not coming down in price. Well, today's video, I'm gonna help answer that question where it's not just the usual things in your country that may exist, like a VAT, which is essentially a tax the governments impose on imports, which will, of course, make products more expensive in general, but there's also some other factors at play here, which we'll discuss right after this sponsor spot. If you're looking for a feature-packed motherboard that won't break the bank, then today's video sponsor ASRock has you covered with the B550 Riptide. You get access to PCIe 4.0, smart access memory, lightning game ports, which separate the keyboard and mouse on their own controllers for no jitters, and an ASRock graphics card holder. Links in the description below to find out more. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and GPU prices all around the globe, depending on where you live, you can get absolutely shafted or you can get an even better deal than you can in America where, for instance, I live in Australia usually, at the moment I'm in Japan where prices are still pretty good here, but in Australia I noticed for new graphics cards, we got some of the best deals in terms of RTX 3080s that were coming under MSRP when we compare that to the dollar exchange price versus say the United States, where I've never seen an RTX 3080 come in under MSRP. And if it did, you would have just not heard about it, where in Australia, these prices actually came up every few weeks and you could reliably get a card under MSRP. But if we look at say parts of Europe, I know for a fact that people in Spain constantly complain here at Tech Air City, they're saying, Brad, I can't get a GPU for a decent price. It's always a rip off where I live. Italy's another example where prices are just ridiculously expensive. And I know this firsthand with Italy because when I went there for a gig I had to do for AMD, I decided to do a used parts hunt, which was pretty uneventful in that prices were a bit shaky in Italy. I couldn't really get good deals there, but I still managed to get some things. But ultimately there are two big reasons why GPU prices are going to be higher in certain countries than other countries. Now the first reason, and this is going to be the biggest reason in 2022, why your GPU prices are still significantly higher than the US. And that is a thing known as the DXY or the dollar index. This tracks the strength of the United States dollar versus the rest of the world. And now since the US dollar is the world's reserve currency, this means that companies like Nvidia, AMD and Intel all conduct their main business through US dollars. So ultimately that price of USD is gonna ring through to the rest of the world. So for instance, if you've got an RTX 3080 Ti going for $1,000 in the United States, that is then going to be converted into whatever currency, whether it's Euro or whether it's Pound or whether it's Singapore dollars, that's then gonna be converted in Nvidia's eyes to that local price so they can still get that 1,000 USD. But then we have to, of course, add all those other factors, which we'll talk about later. But the main thing is this dollar index rules the world at this point in time. Any reading over 100 usually signifies that the dollar is very strong relative to other currencies. And at this point in time, it's around 105, making it quite strong versus the rest of the currencies. So basically what you're gonna see is the 3080 Ti in America is $1,000, then it's at least going to be 1,000 euro in Spain, Italy, and Germany, for example. And if you see it under this price, well, according to the DXY, you're getting a decent deal, which if we look at the RTX 3080 Ti, I'd say at $1,000, it's not a good deal. So don't go out and buy a 3080 Ti just because it's a converted dollar price is cheaper in your home country. But on that token, if you do see an RX 6600 coming under 250 euro at $250, that actually is a pretty good buy. So I would go out personally in your country if you see it under this dollar converted price and go out and buy it, knowing that you're getting a pretty good deal, all other things considered. So that's the fundamentals to the pricing of USD versus other countries. But if we look at whether the dollar itself, the United States dollar, is that going to get stronger or is that going to get weaker? This is one of those things where I personally cannot predict the outcome of this because the actual system of money itself in the world is so complex. And there's a thing that sprouted up in the last decade called the shadow banking system. A lot of people have been talking about this in depth 
And what we're seeing here is that this could go either way. The dollar could get a lot stronger in the coming years or it could get a lot weaker, a lot quicker. It just depends on whether, and ultimately I believe, on whether the Federal Reserve decide to stop the printers and keep them stopped for a number of years or if they decide to ramp up the printers again creating massive amounts of inflation especially if the US government itself finances itself through this cheap printed money from the US Federal Reserve. There were point number one out of the way let's look at point number two and this one relates to the country that you live in personally. Is there a lot of supply and ultimately demand for tech products in your country. For instance, in Australia, I believe there is a massive demand for PC gaming. And so nearly every individual I know has a gaming PC. And so with that makes a massive demand and a healthy market in Australia for PC gaming. But for instance, at the end of 2016, I went on a trip to, I think it's a French controlled island called New Caledonia. And this really opened my eyes because I could not find a PC store anywhere. There was no used market. In fact, the only products that I saw was at this one electronics store. And it was like, literally, if you thought the pandemic pricing was bad for PC parts, New Caledonian prices were all day, every day, pandemic crypto mining prices. And so from what I gathered on this island was there just wasn't enough demand for gaming PCs and their associated products, meaning there's no real incentive for a business to start up there and supply the goods needed to start bringing in these products, at least to get products in at good levels where people want to buy them. So if we look at those two examples, Australia and New Caledonia, we can see that they're pretty much exact opposites of one another. In fact, I would say it's one of the cleanest examples in this video that I can give you where we've got a massive per capita consumption of tech products in Australia and then one of the lowest per capita consumption products in New Caledonia. And I believe most countries out there in the world will then slot somewhere in between Australia and New Caledonia in that you've got to have the supply and demand there and that'll relate to how much product is getting moved into that country and then ultimately how good prices will be. The last thing to talk about in relation to point number two is the country itself and the costs associated in bringing those products into the country. I remember when I was in New Caledonia, I asked someone, okay, can I just buy products off AliExpress, for example, and build a gaming PC by just importing the products? And here's where they were telling me that the import taxes on those products was just absurd. So the governments of those countries were imposing very high import taxes just to get these products into the country. And so that's another factor to consider. What are the costs associated? Is the shipping costs in your country extremely high? If logistics is very high, that's gonna add to the price of a graphics card. Are the import taxes very high? That's ultimately going to add to the price of a graphics card too. So back to the example of Australia, for instance, We've got an agreement with Taiwan and China where we can bring in the products if they're not produced locally in Australia, which graphics cards aren't, and they can bring these products in essentially tax-free. So if prices for tech products are extremely high in your country, what can you do to get access to better prices? And this is where I would suggest perhaps looking at if you have family members or relatives that live in other countries that can get access to much cheaper prices especially versus your local currency, then you can perhaps do a deal with them where you can exchange some uh, products from your country, send them over via gift, and they can send those tech products via gift to you so you don't pay any of those import prices. And also ultimately you get a much better deal in that local currency due to the demand and ultimately the supply chains being a lot more efficient than in your country. Anyhow, guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below what you think about today's video. Do you think the information was good? Do you have any tips and tricks of your own to getting cheaper tech products? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from John Wan, and they ask, why the heck you moved to Japan? And I moved to Japan because I have my son who is a dual citizen, he's Australian, and Japanese citizen and he's currently living in Japan and due to the pandemic I couldn't see him for two years and so now I'm seeing him but I'm also mixing in a bit of work when I can and hopefully you guys are enjoying that content and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.